Look out, footy's back. Welcome to AFLW Today, your one-stop shop for all things AFLW. I'm your host, Alex Donnelly, taking you through the greatest game on earth, AFLW. We are here for our week eight. Yes, week eight, even though everyone's played nine games roundup because, Alex. well, fixturing is dumb and we'll get to that later. As always, joined by the star of the show, Sam's Jacket, Bryony Dawson. Thank you. I'm, I'm, I'm in my denim today. Yeah. Nice. An old-fashioned little 90s number. Thank you very much. Oh, Canada, how do we do it? <laughs> oh, Canada. Yeah, <laughs> Canadian tuxedo. Yeah, 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 yeah All the go. denim. And over there, he's up and about. It's the little fella, Lee McCallion, yes. a.k.a. Stats guy. Let's go. Let's go. North are up and about. I'm up and about. You certainly go. are. Let's go. Before we get into it, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. It's just AFL Today. Seeing as you're already watching it, you're probably already there. So hit the notifications bell so basically anytime we drop a video, beat on this or on our men's program, you'll get it. Great content coming out the Wazoo as well as the podcast platforms. Just basically Google AFL Today Show and we'll come up wherever you get a good podcast platform. Yep. Of course, social media is Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and X. Uh, we made people angry on TikTok last week because, you know, old white men hate women because fair, right? Not fair. No. <laughs> idiots. Not on this, no, pod- not on this like, podcast. They hate. Yes. Like, Yes. They're morons. Yes, yeah, there's lots they of morons. Are. You idiots. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, review show. But as always, when we do this, we have a quick look. And we're going to be serious to start with before we have our Just usual, a minute or two, usual yeah. fun yeah. and stupidity. Mm-hmm. This is n- this okay. was stupid, actually. Yeah. The GWS men's team and their Wacky Wednesday setup. Mm. My theory is like, how did no one say, this is dumb? Why are we being dumb? Why can't we just go have beers in a T-shirt and shorts? Just because really they're bad. idiots. They are it's idiots. So, yeah. It's so ridiculous. Mm. And it's like women have to put up with so much of this crap. Yeah. And, you know, there's so many people passing, oh, it's not that big a deal. And I'm like, oh, no, 100%. Yeah. Many, 100% it is. How many You're, people work in a footy club? Oh, <laughs> no, no, because I'm just thinking a couple hundred. No, because yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not thinking, you know, you've got your Enough. 40 players. Hundreds. The 40 dudes. Yeah. yeah. You have coaching staff, you have your admin, you have your physios, yeah. you have everyone. Marketing, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Up to probably 150, 200 yeah, people yeah, across yeah. the couple, club. A couple hundred, I reckon. There could be five. There could be 10. It doesn't matter. That could be severely triggered by this. Yeah. Yeah, 100%. Oh, massively. Lots of people. I mean, yeah. yeah, that's absolutely one way to look at it. There's way more than that when you mm. know the actual statistics. Mm. But the fact that these players are educated, oh, they're educated beyond what anyone else has been educated. Yeah. Beyond what you've probably been educated. Probably, yeah. You've been educated. Yeah, yeah. Except you guys know that that yeah, yeah, yeah. to do that. Like I just it I just don't understand. And you have to keep making that decision. Once you've gone, I'm gonna go They're dressed gonna as this, that. Yeah. I've got to make the oh. decision to go get my costume. I've at no point has he stopped and thought, I'm an idiot. Mm, but I absolutely shouldn't do this. How has not one of them gone, um, fellas? Yeah. And kind then, of dumb, like very the, dumb. Their little grips got, oh, this is going to be funny. Yeah. But then they've not gone, oh, maybe the whole club or the community or like so many people can be affected, especially within the club. Imagine you're walking in the club past some of those players the next week, like the men's players come in for a bit of recovery or something. And yeah. the, the women's players are just walking. But like you'd be absolutely embarrassed and, yeah. and it's so annoyed. So horrible, horrible. Yeah. It's just horrific. And I, I asked you guys beh- before the <clears throat> the show, like, you know, what's your take on it as, you know, straight white men? Mm. Like what have your group chats said about it and did anyone have any opinion and what was it so the way that it got drip fed was also the biggest issue because oh, yeah, it starts with too. toby guns uh, toby green has been uh fined 20 grand because because he's a captain and he dressed up as ray gun and everyone and everyone of, went well, that's to that, dumb yeah. because yeah. well let's be honest that sounds really dumb yeah then it got <laughs> every 20 minutes yeah. it just got worse and worse and worse to the point at like three o'clock we're like ah oh, this is like really bad yeah so the group chats throughout the day like we're in one and i'm in a couple of others and basically like they're just dumb yeah mm. like everyone sort why? of just went yeah it's just just like, so dumb yeah. stupidity but it makes it it makes sense right to the to the general male population yeah that's really stupid oh, and should not be 100%. done yeah and that the fact that there was a big group of them it wasn't like just a couple the, i don't get how no one said like, maybe someone did say oh this is stupid and they sort of just did it anyway yeah but the fact that there's such a big group like mm-hmm. yeah just very embarrassing. I get that, like, we're changing cultures, we're changing the way people are thinking about these kind of things. Mm. Um, and so for you not to, like, to keep making that decision yeah, like I said, it's probably over like and over process. again oh, yeah. is just like, mm. what the hell, man? And it's the thing so is, dumb. it came out on the Wednesday as well, which, like, ha- nearly half derailed a bunch of trade things that GWS were doing as well. So these... Yeah. 
morons have nearly stuffed up the whole, you know, whatever it is, a bunch of planning yeah. for list management, salary cap and everything else. It's like stop making football as your heroes, kids. Mm. Mm. If you did that at a normal workplace, if you did that That's here, would was, you lose your job? So I was, talk, yeah. I was talking I was to saying. this about my boss, to one of our bosses on what Thursday, Friday after it all came. I was like, hey, if we did this, you know, just for a team lunch, he's like, yeah, you're fired. Like, 100%. Yeah. 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 And statistically, those, like, everyone's like, it was just a joke. It doesn't mean anything. It's not a joke. Those <laughs> attitudes towards rape and violence oh, against women leads to rape and violence yeah. against women. And so it's just like, horrible. just stop. Mm -hmm. Couldn't have said it any better myself. Yeah. Anyway, I'll tell you what I hate. <laughs> Umpires! Oh. <laughs> we've, had our, we've had our seriousness. I need to get this back on track. <laughs> Great. <laughs> to our normal stuff because yeah. we do... We'd, we need to touch on We like on to things. touch on the serious and we also we like, like to touch have fun. On everything. everything. We, yeah. yeah, we need to be serious when we need to be. But yeah. overall, this show is about fun, bringing everyone in. We're an inclusive space. You want to come hang? Come hang. We're a good good hang. I usually have snacks. You do. You have great snacks. That's, that's true. No, your girlfriend makes good yeah, snacks. Yeah, Thank yeah, you. Yeah, I, was gonna say. I bring the snacks that <laughs> yeah. she just she makes because she's the most lovely person delicious, ever. Delicious, delicious. Anyway, the umpiring. We want to treat this game seriously and, you know, uh, professionally as it is because it's a professional sport and they're getting paid well, not well enough. The umpiring is disgustingly bad. On Saturday, I think it, it came to a head. Mm -hmm. I've never, I watched three games back to back to back. I didn't watch the Derby till yesterday, but back to back to back, I was like, oh, this GWS Hawthorne game, oh, the umpiring's bad. I text our group chat. This was her, this is bad, really yeah. bad. The Swans and Gold Coast game, I was like, this cannot get any worse. Just free kicks that are being paid that are not there and then you're missing the obvious ones. I think it's the – we talked about it at the start of the season where they were paying more holding the balls. We're like, oh, this is good. Yeah. And then I was watching even the North game yesterday. It's, it, they're just letting too many holding the balls oh, loose. Like, ridiculous. Like you could take three steps, get tackled, drop yeah. the ball. The crowd at, at Windhoek yesterday yeah. went going off. Like yeah. I, I would have I done the same thing yeah. if I was a Bombers fan. They're just not paying holding the ball. I think that's that's the main but, one for but me. But then it's then it's that. But then they're pl paying all these little technical crap yeah. ones that are just yep. not yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. Like there was, it happened in a couple of ruck contests. The swan, the swan ruckman uh, would jump up for the ball, and the umpire would be like, "No, nah, block!" It's like she's jumping for the ball. <laughs> yeah, that's what you do. And then when Dupay kicks the winner, hands all over the swan's defender's face, just pushing them out of the way. You're like, well, that's a block. That's height. Nap. Go. All clear. It's like. You've been paying this all day when yeah. it's not there, and then you missed the blatantly obvious one that's made a stats go away, and then it got worse mm. in Richmond and Melbourne. Yep. It was twenty to th or sixteen to three at one point. The free kick count in Melbourne's way. It was insane, and mm -hmm. I know sometimes it's like, oh well, they got to the ball first. It's like, no, Richmond just weren't getting free kicks that they mm. deserved, and Melbourne mm. were getting really soft ones. And it's just like, what are we doing? Yeah, it is. It is. Really, really frustrating because I and like I feel for the umpires because you know there's a very it, it, uh, it's it's a hard game. unrewarding job. Are exactly. They, yeah. Are they being coached? Are we going through tape yeah. on Monday where there's it's not like enough umpires? We through, have Steve McBurney or whoever the umpires coach is on the men's yeah. side going. Well, you got these thirty two decisions right. These six were wrong, and here's why. Yeah, like I'd be doing that. they would be doing that. You'd hope so, but yeah. we don't hear about it because no. I don't know. We never hear from the footy boss. Oh, yeah. oh. Which, which then leads into That's the next our point. Next, next point. There we go. I love it. Quick look is is uh, rolling. Podcast <laughs> segue. <laughs> so we actually did hear from her finally because Emma Moore, the boss of the AFLW, sat down with Scoops Riley, okay, Eliza Riley, Scoops. one of our best friends. <laughs> yeah. Uh, over in the West with the Derby over the weekend with Laura Kane. People had been screaming last week, going, "Um, hi, Emma. She yeah. real? Where are you, mate? She a Terminator? Does she exist? <laughs> she finally popped up." in a very controlled environment where I'm sure that there would have been pre-approved questions and things and that. And they yeah. talked about improving the game, growing the game, go to code sports, read the article. Good article. It was very fluffy. And I'm sure that Eliza had things that she had to go by. So I'm not going, yeah. I'm not going after Eliza yeah. in any way, but this is the third time that we've heard from Emma Moore. It's since more like the political sort yeah, it was, of down it, the line answers. Is that yeah, what you're going for? It was, yeah. it was yeah. like a, a, a pre-written thing. Yeah. Like these was, are the things we want to get across. Who can write it for us? Oh, Eliza. Great. Yeah. yeah. Cause we're over in Perth. We'll go to the top journal over there, yeah. which Eliza is. It's like, Oh, we had to try with the condensed fixture and some of the time slots. Cause we weren't sure if they worked. Hey, you know what? <laughs> what did it work? 
Five o'clock at Frankston. <laughs> Anyone could have told you that <laughs> on a Wednesday. Yeah, we should be doing the fixed string maybe next season. I reckon. Honestly, <laughs> you scared me. We had to try it. Sorry, stats guy. I needed a fire. Go on, Andy. I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> but yeah, we had to try. Okay, I get it. Like yeah, but like five o'clock on a Frankston. I think anyone could have told you it wasn't going to work. And they haven't ruled out the condensed fixture. When I read that, oh, really? haven't ruled oh. out the condensed fixture Just for next year. Done. I was like. Nah, mate. Let's Sorry. have more knee injuries. And, you're gonna have uh, you're gonna uh, have a, a player strike if that yeah. happens again because I know. it's unhealthy. You would never do it in the men's exactly ever. <laughs> the men would strike, but they the would. guinea pigs, the AFLW, you're happy to do it for them. It's ridiculous. And then they'll say, ah, oh, but you did in COVID. Yes, you want to know why they did in COVID? Because the men weren't going to get paid, and the AFL was going to lose a billion dollars. And they were relaxing on golf mm. courses half the time. Anyway. Yeah, they, they were living there, so they can't complain. Which leads me to the five-step plan to save the AFL. Oh, Not geez, save it. Five steps to accelerate growth. Okay. Right. I wrote this at five thirty this morning. I've been percolating we'll throughout this the week yeah, as well. You're going to be asleep by midday today. I can tell. I've, I'm, you're going to have I've, to have a little nap in the corner, I've, aren't you? I booked into the physio at one fifteen because yeah. my shoulder stuffed. <laughs> uh, too much like going Come on at the horses on the weekend. I'm anyway, sure yeah, that's, that's what, what it is. was. Yep. So as of shut up. <laughs> as of two thousand and twenty-five. So next year we have a sixteen-week season, which includes finals. Okay. So there's twelve games. So yep. we're going up from eleven to twelve. That's what we're doing anyway. I don't Great. mind that. Don't mind. Great. It's already in the books. This is the five, breaking stuff, five steps. Number one, 17 home and away rounds with one mid-season buy, four weeks of finals, which makes it a 22-week season. Okay. Okay. So everyone plays each team once. Yep. I do like that, but and that's then, not going to happen for a few years. It's not going to happen. When but... Tazzy comes in, you make it 18 rounds because, you know, you've got to play got everyone. Ya. Number two, if we're keeping the pre-finals buy in the men, AFLW Grand Final, 4.40 p.m. Saturday afternoon at Marvel Stadium in that midweek buy. Yes. Mm-hmm. Should be in a big stadium. Midweek yeah. buy, mid-end of season buy. Because... Yep. You build it like, hey, the buys then, AFLW Grand Final at 440 at Marvel. AFL owns the stadium. You make it 15 buck entry for everyone, $5, whatever. Yep. Number three, 18 v 18, time off for stoppages and five more players on the list. That one's just Yes, that obvious. makes sense. No, any more yes, on the list. Yep. Yes. So number four, which comes into it, is to the fixturing. Two to three double headers per week. So like any time a team travels to GWS or Gold Coast in the men's, you put the women on the plane too and you play a double header. Yep. Yes. Because if the GWS team, if GWS is playing at 4.30 on a Saturday, get a crowd. Bang, straight after it, AFLW runs out, let's go. Yep. Because it also makes it easier for resourcing for the clubs because everyone's there. It also help, has the TV cameras and everything set up there so you've got your crew there and everything else. Also, don't be dumb. <laughs> don't put a game involving Carlton on at Icon Park when the men are playing at the MCG. Yes. If there's a Friday night game being played in Perth, why not have a 6.40 game at Witten, Icon, or at Henson Park? Because Friday night in Perth doesn't start till 8.30. you got a time slot. Number five, finally. We talked about it in the men's. Monday night footy. Nah. Make it the peak time slot in AFLW each week. You want to play a showdown? Bang. 7.10 on a Monday night at the Adelaide Oval. People want to go on a Monday night. I reckon you built stats guy. They said the same thing about the NFL. Now, what's the feature time slot in the NFL? Monday night. I nights. am still against men and if, women if, playing on a Monday night. If you not build it, that. they will come. Because I'm we're not, not going playing, to a game on a Monday night. We're not playing Thursday night footy in this because there's just no with the men's on at the same time. There's just no way to do it. Because I don't. But I, I agree that it should be separated a bit more. I, I know what you're saying. And then number six is just a little, little <laughs> add-on. Friday night of grand final week at Marvel Stadium, AFLW versus Island AFLW. Yes. Ten buck entry for everyone. I love how the five step love plan that. had six steps. Yeah, but that, no, that's, that's just a cool add on. That's, 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 that's just a little add on. Yeah. That's, that's an Alex that, one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's, yeah, that's yeah. We're all here for We're all here for that. Monday night. I'm big on Monday night. I, footy. I hear you on a, lo- a, a lot of those things, but the thing is, you also complain about the grounds that we're playing on and that kind of stuff. If you're going to have that fixture at the same time in the men's and, and the that. Grounds kind of, availability. The yeah. grounds availability. They just don't have this it. We're not even going to be able to. We're not even going to be able to be at Kinetic Stadium and that kind of stuff because there's mm. VFL men. They don't, they don't want to move the men's VFL. Why don't we look at moving the whole men's AFL fixture mm. back, back a little bit? Yeah. And then we still started in the I think people bite. would do that because everyone wants footy early anyway, Can't so. touch the men's. Yeah. Don't touch the men's game. Love that. <laughs> there's, there's got to, there has to be more. They need to be more uh, aggressive in their approach at building this, which is why they brought on um, an Emma Moore because she's a marketing person mm. and yep. it's like, how do we do this? How do we build it? Yes. Um, but there's you can't just build it around the men's. That's not how it is going to thrive and mm-hmm. succeed. You've got to move the men's to make some space because we're dealing with 
a summer of cricket in Australia, which is a huge, huge that's sport. Why they, well, that's why they can't move the men's because the the MCG is under contract to Cricket Australia and everything else for X amount of months they per year. Say, yeah. That's a binding like 50 to 100 year contract. Same with the SCG, same with the Adelaide Oval. So there's contracts in place, which is why I saw Georgie Parker tweet about it yesterday. Mm. She's like, why can't we play the AFLW at the MCG? Because as of two weeks ago, the AFL was like, oh, our time's up here with, with the MCG. Cricket Victoria then take over. Mm-hmm. That's why. AFL does own a stadium. It's called Marvel. Maybe play more they games They could there. play more games there. That's for sure. They this is why I'm big on the doubleheader they, thing. They absolutely could. I'm big on the doubleheader thing too, but then they start talking about the VFL and the men's and I'm just like, yeah, surely the oh, AFLW for... has more. Yeah. yeah. Which, is why, which is why I said for games when you go away to GWS or Gold Coast because they're not getting big crowds for the men as it is. But you take it, you know, you have GWS playing, I don't know, like West Coast over there. There's some people that are going over there to watch it. And I reckon a bunch of people would stay to watch Ella Roberts go head to head with Zali Goldsworthy. Mm. Yes. Anyway. Yeah. I agree. Let's with keep rolling, I reckon. Ladder <laughs> check. Because that's guy wants to talk about North Melbourne. Yes, that's why I wanted Yay! to talk about it. They are on top of the AFL dub line. Yes. 335%. <laughs> <laughs> eight wins, one draw. That's going to be a record for a percent. Like, we're up to 320-something percent, and we've gone up somehow. Someone will, <laughs> like, someone will bring out the record. It was insane. Into second, and looking like locks yeah. for the top four, top two top even. Top two, I reckon, yeah. Hawthorne Hawkballers, eight wins, one loss. That one loss to the Adelaide Crows, who moved up into second with a big win yesterday. Third. Collingwood. Third, Third sorry. Uh, fourth, Brisbane Lions. Because they lost to the Cats. Weird. What the hell? Richmond still in fifth. Didn't move, but they lost over the weekend. Freo with their win in the Derby. Makes it 7-0 in Derbies. Up to, uh, stayed in sixth. Port Adelaide have jumped up to seventh with their win. Your beloved Bomb Rays down to eighth. Then all, <laughs> of, on. On. all of a sudden, they're essening it in the most Essendon way possible. <laughs> yeah. They're like, what, what did the men's do again? Oh, we'll, oh what's we'll that? Try. Give you hope <laughs> to be fair, and what? then dash those hopes expertly. They played north. They played north. Yeah, but <laughs> that's... They are. If they lose, they are out of the eight. <laughs> Melbourne, they're, they're, they're ninth. They're charging four in a row, looking good. St Kilda, despite a loss, have a better percentage than Essendon. So if Essendon lose next week and St Kilda win, bang, they hurdle them. West Coast continue their tumble down. One of their last five. <sighs> Geelong have absolutely cooked it. They've stuffed their season despite winning three wins, five losses. The Western Bulldogs, sure. Great season compared to uh, last Not great of season. Yeah. Like, thir- was it Thursday, Friday night? The most insane result. Yeah, we'll touch on that. that possible. Thursday night, that was unbelievable. Uh, Carlton are down to 14th because Carlton, my beloved Swans in 15th. Jesus, I'm going to talk about that later. Uh, <laughs> GWS stayed in 16th. Gold Coast up to 17th. Yes. And Collingwood are going to get the wooden spoon. Well, that was my big call last week. Gold Coast win and Collingwood get the wooden spoon. It's looking likely. Really, at the really wasn't a big call. And Gold Coast went in his favourite, but sure. No, they didn't. Collingwood will have their head in their hands at the moment and looking back on their season and I just know, being injuries like, and how oh. did we get here? They were just like they're already thinking about next season. Sure, yeah, they are. No, they're definitely not thinking about. <laughs> no, next I, was, season. I was. I was. I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> I mean, game be, by game, game, yeah, by, game, by, game. game. <laughs> by game. Come on, stats guy. <laughs> Give us the cliches. <laughs> no, no, anyway, no. let's get into some game wraps. Let's oh. go to Thursday night. Carlton 4 4 28, defeated by the Western Bulldogs 9 7 61. Wait, can you say that again? 9 7 61 <laughs> with Tam High going. Are you not entertained? <laughs> Look at this. That was... We can kick goals. It was awesome. That's the one of the best like <sighs> team performances I've seen all year. The dogs played entertaining, fun, attacking footy. Their coach is like, oh, I just flicked the switch. Maybe if they did this early in the season, they would have kicked some more goals, like against Port, the game we watched them at. Oh, crazy. They were very good. It was very fun. They showed they showed up from the mim- minute they got there. Yeah, oh, you were there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, we talked about it before, the game, you know, the, the flooding that back line from the previous week. Yeah. They had so many one-on-one contests when it was Great. coming back into their defensive 50 and they were winning the contest mm. as well. It's like they just backed themselves. They look confident. Um, and I love that about that Bulldogs team. And I think that's something, that's the Bulldogs spirit that has been carried for it's like the Bulldogs generation, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know. Um, and it was just, it was beautiful, beautiful to watch. They were able to get it into their forward 50 and keep it there as well. They looked like a completely different team. I went and um, what listened to the quarter time huddle at um, with Matthew Buck, and he was just he so excited. Yeah. <laughs> so frustrated. Um, oh, sorry, Matthew. Yeah, Carlton yeah, Coach. yeah. Carlton sorry, Carlton Carlton Coach. Coach. That's my bad. Yeah, he was. He's, he's it was a, very frustrating. He's watch. a pretty chill. He's a pretty, pretty chill, chill dude. Yeah, he he's yeah. like, and he was like 
giving him a rev up, which you don't see a lot uh, in women's as football. Question, and he was like, oi. Are there swears involved? Absolutely. Because there was the David Noble, the ex-North Melbourne coach, did a gave North Melbourne a spray after they got belted one day yeah. with swears involved, and their president was like, "You need to apologize." So I don't oh know. I don't God. know how that comes across. Nah, like, he was. It's, it's if you a, have respect with your coach, it's and also a, on game. That's fine. it's also a man, a man yelling at you know. No, nah, it's a, this is the thing. He gave him coming from a good he, place. he gave him a spray. He didn't swear at anyone. No, he, he hasn't like, gone. You yeah, yeah, no, 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 he's not going to no, do that. Okay. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's so like, for, yeah, it was a big mention. He was like. Bloody Fitzgerald's had 12%. <laughs> How is she, where is she getting these 12%? Yeah, Someone strong. tackle her. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, he wasn't. Um, had, uh, yeah. And the Carlton just looked really flat-footed. They didn't look switched on. And you could see them. They were like railing. And then they'd get out there and it was like they were just going through Concrete sludge. Boots. They just couldn't get the link up, the running to their forward 50. And then they just like ran out of steam. Yeah, so, dogs, dogs were just so good. Like I said, they flicked the switch. They had eight different goal kickers. I don't think they've had eight different goal kickers the whole season. And yeah, they've done that in one. the first time they've kicked eight goals this year. 100%. So then uh, 42 to 20 inside 50s as well. They dominated the game. Yeah. Like they, they just set up a really good wall. Just the tactics were just positive footy, yeah. which is what I'm going to touch on later with Essendon and a few other teams where you go into the game going, oh, we're going to play defensive and negative. You can't win. Like you might lose by a lot if you play a bit too positive, a bit too attacking. Yeah. But you have a chance to win. And the dogs yeah. showed that. They so can do that. a stat that uh, Twitter. Twitter person at, at AFL training sent through basically is if you have between zero and 20 inside fifties, you don't win. Yeah. You're zero and five this year. Yep. If you have 26 to 30, uh, you are eight and 25. Basically you need to get more than 30 inside fifties and score over 35 points to win because the winning rate of teams that have scored between 11 and 20 points this season is one and 18 between 21 and 30 is seven and 31. So you need oh, 30 points. 30, so, 30, so, so I tuned so, out so, halfway through that. So pretty much if you get so 30. 30 <laughs> so if you Anyone get, else? So a little you, bit. <laughs> so if you get 31 inside 50s or more and yeah. 35 points or more, you you're most pretty of the time much going to win. Yeah. Okay, great. Which makes sense. Which there's been a couple of games where that well hasn't done. been the case. But yes. <laughs> Very nice. Very nice. Um, how was uh, Chrissy Lee Weston Turner kicked her goal? Yeah, and then oh yeah, I forgot about hurt that. her ankle, and they were like the celebration was a bit too overzealous. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. Just, I think she did like a rolled her ankle or something. Yeah. And then I checked in with the the media team, and I was like, "Hey, how is she?" And they're like, "No, no, no, she's fine, she's fine." I watched her when she came she back out. She a little bit. Yeah, she was. She barely got a touch after mm. that. And Don't like, jump when you celebrate. Yeah. Well, just it was very funny. <laughs> Bonnie Tugel got crash tackled when she kicked a guy. So she's like, "Go away, we're getting smashed." Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. I saw. I saw that. That she was, was like, which funny, goes it was back. Paid, it was a Paige Scott yeah. who went up to her. Goes back to our video. Gerald, throw up the link now. I did ask the question with the Asics uh, people, going, "Hey, who's likely to celebrate when you're eight goals down and have kicked?" Bonnie a goal? said, and "No Bonnie's way." Like, yeah. Nah. Yeah. Which is fair. Which is fair. we can t- we'll touch on that. Okay. Anyway, we'll get to that. Uh, McKay as well. I thought she was pretty good for Carlton. She had yeah. twenty-nine touches. Yeah. Eight tackles, like. It was her 50th. It was her 50th. And everyone yeah. should be lifting instead. Like, obviously, she's going to lift. She's a gun, Abby McKay. But, yeah. but everyone should be lifting for your mate's that 50th. Was, that was mentioned in the huddle. There you too. go. Because I feel like, especially in a game like this where they're probably expected to win, yeah. just forget about that. You go on, all right, we want to go there and put in our best performance for our mate's 50th, yeah. record game, things like that. No, and no. then they didn't do that. So it was but one McKay of those... did. So, bit of inside baseball. You had an interview lined up at the end of the game, but the uh, oh, show yeah. was over. Oh, it's devoed. I know. Oh, yeah, Take I us had, through that. Oh, look, Tam Hyatt was really emotional after the game. Like, obviously, it had been a really um, stressful week for her. She had been highly criticised yeah. by des- all of us, deservedly right? Deservedly so. Yeah, it was, yep, yep, probably not not the the scrutiny that... I it, think the, that, some of the people online took yeah, it too far, yeah, yeah. which happens and, all the time. And yeah. she's a new AFLW coach. I know she's a very experienced coach, but she's a new AFLW coach, mm. and I think we forget the, the person um, behind those jobs sometimes. Absolutely. And she was um, emotional, and, and rightly so, because her team came out and played exceptional footy for her and we had her lined up for an interview and we couldn't get to it because they went to the song but I was like oh my god you would have been... there goes Malogi <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> exactly that would have been a, yeah very... would have been good yeah oh she was just yeah it was she was just like really raw and having her stand next to me I, I just yeah felt you know I could have really sort of spoken to her and, and people could have seen a, a different side to the mm. to the footy so anyway that's all right Fan bases, Carlton, the hell, man. Seriously. They they should be doing better. No, they, they, they'd be like, what they're the hell, They're having a rough man? season. Yeah. Yeah. They're having a rough season. And the yeah. dogs are just like, 
Dogs are like, don't finally. Get, don't get it, but this is awesome. Is it going to happen again? Don't know. So happy. <laughs> if they yeah. play like that, they can beat some. some this teams. is what I mean. Yeah. They can play like yeah. that. Let's let's find some consistency. Yeah. Here, oh. like, well, if, the consistency doesn't exist in AFLW at the moment <laughs> with the amount of teams going like this. Side note: Search out the Western Bulldogs video on Elaine Grigg. The video of her when she gets drafted with her mother celebrating uh, yeah. like crazy. Yes, yes. You sent it to me. I showed it to my girlfriend. She basically started crying. Like, That's so nice. Yeah. It's it's quite it was quite emotional. Yes. And it, she played really well. If yeah. it doesn't pull up the heart, and the match up on you. Gab Pound as oh, well. I was, I was loving fun. that one. Yeah. I put that on the group chat. I'm like, have a look at this. They were like <laughs> going head to head. Oh yeah. god, it was good. Why are they gonna hurt each other? Anyway, Friday, Port Adelaide, 7547, took care of St. Kilda, 5232. Can I just spend two minutes talking about Schultz? Yeah, go on. She rules. Getting better every single week, yeah. I reckon. Yeah. And then wax and eat everyone's like, ACO. She's like, nah, bro, just bone bruising. We're cool. She was um, she was in pain. Like yeah. she was in writhing yeah. pain. When you like it's like when you roll your ankle. Oh. Have you like have I you ever had that? She's out, though, when you go like down, week, yeah. like you roll your ankle and you're like sweating because you're in so much pain. Mm-hmm. But then like 20 minutes later, like, okay. Yeah. It's just a But she ankle. did look, yeah, in a lot of pain. She was in a lot but She was of awesome. Pain. She had the most disposal on the ground, 22, as a tall. Like, yeah. the the ad- agile just a bit of everything she can yeah. do for a tall is just so fun to watch. She set up so many uh, scoring yeah, shots as well. She, she yeah, was, she was incredible. Mm. Goody had a really good game as yes. well. 22 touches, 11 marks, 8 tackles, 6 intercepts. Oh, poor intercepts, yeah. Right. Yes. Port Adelaide, this close, and for those not watching, I've got a very small gap here. This close to jumping into the elite teams here. No. Think of how young their list is. I think is. a couple of years. Yeah, but yeah, in a couple of years, some of those new saying, yeah. um, elite players need a little bit more time in the gym, a little yeah. bit more time playing yeah. um, at that Get elite level. Yeah. But yeah, They're Goody, close, yeah. I reckon I reckon she's up for Rising Star, Rising star for sure. this yeah. year. Her ball use is outstanding. Who's she just win? can read the play so well. That's what I mean. No, I think Goody. Goody. I reckon yeah. Goody's we up said, there. I, I called that a start. I thought she was going to win, but mm-hmm. tell you what, Big one. Schultz is putting yeah. pretty good body on yeah. work. Oh, uh, yeah, Schultz. I, yes, because this, this, she's had a – this is her second year being nominated. Yeah, Yeah, but if you play under X amount of games, you get it. I need to find out who the nominees are for this year before That's I right. can make a well, call. Well, actually, talking about Schultz, how the hell did she not get Mark of the Year? I know it's fan voted, but what are the fans doing? That was this, clearly... is, this is ridiculous. That when I found that out, oh. it, the, the AFL, yeah, listen just to my words. Yeah. You need to make a special exception yeah. for Matilda Schultz to win Mark of the Year because she's taken literally one of the best marks Broke in AFLW internet. history. Mm. Everyone in the league agrees, and just because... Essendon are a more pop, popular Fair side. Yeah, yeah. I guarantee you, Bonnie Too Good, who won Mark of the Week <laughs> last week, will be like, that, yeah. hey, kids, Matilda Schultz <laughs> had the Mark of the Week, and that's what needs to happen. Make it happen, AFLW, yes. because I've already prepped for the interview. <laughs> yes, I know. So, but, like, couldn't they have just like over- overrode it just to go, all right? No, so the votes are fake. Let's just put an extra few percent on uh, the port. panel. That's what I would have done if the, I was there. There's a panel or something. They get to add in a couple of ones because last year, uh, Hotter, who won Mark of the Year, didn't win Mark of the Week. Some Crows player oh, won it. Okay. I like a bunch of people on mentions going, hey, this happened last year. Relax. Okay, so she's still going to win Mark Everyone relax. Of the year. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Everyone run around. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Uh, for St. Kilda, Tiana Smith was good again. Friend of the show, Tiana yeah. Smith. She kicks, two goals, loves a ten snag. tackles, two goals, ten tackles. Yeah, really she does, good. doesn't she? She's really, really quick good. on the uh, counter attack as well. Um, mm. Jamie Lambert had a game as well. Her work rate and intensity is like yeah. off the chart. She was getting a few professional free kicks though. Yes, you like, weren't happy with that. I wasn't happy with that. I put that on the group chat too, kids. Uh, <laughs> just <laughs> like literally, and she goes at it like a like. Yeah, like, I don't like those ones. Like a goat, bit of Joel She's Salwood just like, vibe. Yeah, yeah, just yeah. putting. All of that in mm. there and just get – I reckon she had like four or five where she just – Smart like, but annoying. Yeah, but, but you then hurt. you're going to get you get concussion. Hurt. True, true. true. Mm. Fan bases, Port Light is great. How good? Like Back in the eight. Playing finals. Yeah. Should play finals. Yeah. St. Kilda like, ooh. Because this was a big game. Whoever won this probably was going to finish seventh or eighth. Yeah. So yeah. done well there. Yeah, for the, wherever I got St. Kilda, I've got – I'm doing the powering. It's like, oh, can they can they make it? Like it's, I think it's very tough for them bit. to do, do now because there's just so, such evenness with those teams like Melbourne are coming, Essendon can can still stay there. I think it might be done. I think that uh, – yeah, I think they're done. Yeah. I think they've Agreed. done their dash. Saturday, double up game for you. Hawthorne 9, 761, defeated GWS 3624. Doesn't tell the story. GWS jumped them and it's like – Hi, Hawthorne. Game started at one. 
<laughs> just just might want to wake up. Yeah. And Aaron Frank. It's like they gave him a head start a little it's bit. It's a bit yeah. weird, you know, and then like 2.30, they're like, oh, yeah, footy, footy, <laughs> footy. Yeah, it was pretty, it was, it was. It was weird. It was really good by GWS because they came out to play. They looked hungry. They looked composed. They looked skilled. They were literally outdoing the Hawks at their own game. It was great, highly skilled, free-flowing footy, which was amazing. Elise Parker. Oh, yeah. So like good. not just the game but the week that she had, the way that she um, she's the epitome of a leader for yep. me. Um, to to call out the men in public and then to come out and play the game that she did um, and to lift your team, rack up 27 disposals, eight tackles and five clearances. She was in absolutely everything and my hat goes off to her. That is a leader of a club for sure. Yeah. Especially, yeah, like you said, after such a big week. But, like the Giants were in this. At halftime it was one point. Mm-hmm. You're going, all right, they can, yeah, and then obviously they faded in the second half and Hawks are just, they're so fun. They're the most fun team to watch. I think we yeah. said this in the men's all season. Yeah. And now we're saying this in the women's. They're leading the uh, um, McClellan Trophy, yeah. which is the men's and women's uh, yeah, combined. Yeah, yeah. And they were 17th in that last year. And now they're, they're on the top of that. So the whole club is just on fire. You got the best player to watch in the league, which I'm going to touch on later as well. Aileen Gilroy is just awesome. Three She's goals. Amazing. Literally any time it goes on her boot, even if it's about 60 out, I'm like, she could probably kick this. She could this. probably get yeah, that. She could probably this. do it. She's awesome. Awesome celebrations as always. High five in the crowd. Oh, like, yeah, I love like, that one. Yeah. And then this the, and then the, 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 the yeah. bow and arrow. Just the, this, we need more of that. And, yeah, she's just so fun to watch. A great matchup uh, on the day was Anya McDonough and Pepper Randall. Yes. Um, yes, we talked about that. Randall just got up her and just mm. it really, really affected her. Yeah, and McDonough didn't do much. And yeah. Kirby Bentley, who was on commentary with me, she was like, this is uh, textbook how to get inside the, the forward's head. Yeah. Every other uh, person in the back line uh, in the hands. AFLW should be absolutely watching this because she rattled her big yeah, time. Yeah, absolutely. After halftime, it was seven goals to one. Mm. So that, but that shows you how quickly the, the Hawks can put the score on the board. That shows their depth cr- as well. Oh, and their depth, like – like we've said, oh yeah, if you're kicking goals from midfield, that's what North do. That's what that's what Hawks do, and that's why they're the yeah. top two teams. Fleming yeah. got forward, kicked a goal. Batesy as well, kicked a goal. But friend of the show, Baskerin, Charlie Baskerin, back in the team, two goals. Buzzer yeah. beater as well. Honestly, yeah. that was th- cool. thought she was going to cook it there. I know. Like, <laughs> don't know how long she's going to go. Like, God damn it, kids! One second, there's one second. That was great. Yeah. And really then nailed it to like good finishing, but yeah, Gilroy also just because 17 disposals, 15 kicks, just yeah, yeah just that's a great forward. Uh, yeah. yeah, just a chef's yeah. kiss of a yeah. game. But uh, so. We need to talk about this. So after the game, we've talked about the GWS men off the top, and this obviously comes into it because their coach has come out and has basically said, yeah, our fade out was because of the week we've had. And it's like, I can get it because of everything where your head is Tough and all week, that, yeah. all the energy you've expelled and then you're on the road and you got to get to Frankston because it's not an easy journey going from just Sydney to Frankston. It's like you got to get from wherever you live to the Sydney airport, which is in Mascot, and if you're living, living out in Western Sydney, it's a bit of a hike. Then you got to get to Melbourne. Then you got to get down to Frankston, which is another forty minutes. So there's a lot going on there, mm. and it's an earlier game. It's one o'clock, so you're probably going to be there at what 10, 30, 11. Mm-hmm. Yeah, everything that comes into it, it's like, oh yeah, understandable. I didn't like GWS saying, "No, nah, you can't talk to the players post game there," because it would have been very good to get their raw and honest thoughts. Because like, hey, we've called these players out. Mm. Let's get. They, there's probably a lot of them that don't want to talk. Maybe a hundred percent. But I know what you're saying it, yeah. it would be good because, like, uh, at least Parker, like you said, was yeah. a bit more open about it. But a lot of players aren't. Yeah, but even if it's just one person, like, I'll go and talk. Yeah. And just to Mm. get the thought and the vibe just of how the group is feeling Mm. and how they feel about the game and the fade out. Because they they started hot Mm. and they were concrete boots in the last quarter. Yeah. 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 Yeah, Tough one. Yeah, it is a tough one. There's one side of looking at you go, oh, come on, don't make excuses. But then the other side of it is like, if you were them, it would be 100% be tough. Yeah. 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 And they're also 18, 19, 20 year olds. True. You know what I mean? They're They're kids. Yeah. And so you think, you think back to when you were that age, mm. and if, you, if you'd had a really rough week, hey, 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 I'm not, I'm not. the media wants to to ask you serious questions yeah. after a loss. Yeah, and exactly. I'd be like, absolutely, and you're still processing everything. Yeah. Absolutely no way. Nah, good call. And good you don't call. have media training. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Nah, good nah. call. Fan bases, Hawthorne, sick. Yeah, Hawthorne are just up and about. Oh. They're up and so about. good. GWS fans were happy with the effort and just like, oh, God damn, this just an, annoyed with everything else. Yeah. 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 Happy with the effort and just obviously against a better team. It happens. It's just like, oh, yeah, sure. Henson Park, Sydney, 6 10 46, defeated by Gold Coast, 7 8 50. This sucked. <laughs> yeah, as a Sydney <laughs> yeah. fan, yeah. as a yeah. Swans fan. <laughs> so well, I go to you on Thursday and I'm like, okay, Charlie Robottom and Lucy Singler are only going to have 35 disposals between them. 
you think the Swans are going to win, right? You'd think so, but everyone else stepped up for once. The Gold Coast, it was God, the Gold Claudia Coast. Whitford rules. Claudia yeah. Whitford was really an injury. Good. Yeah. Doopy steps up, takes some big grabs, kicks a couple of snags, uh, just as a Swan, Swans fan. Dominate every key mm-hmm. metric. Also, if you said this game was going to be 50 to 46, I would have thought you were you know, joking. That, that's like a big score. Line. It was it was raining for a lot of the game, mm. but they were still getting scores on the board. It was, it was actually it was a very really fun game. Wind. Uh, yeah. yeah, Swans dominate the key metrics, lose, kicked eight behinds at one point. Lexi Hamilton. Misses two was was it Lexi or was it the sister? Uh just missed two sitters at one point from directly in front. Yeah. yeah, it was Lexi Hamilton. Like had a shot, missed it, gave Lucy Single an earful because they're giving Lucy Single a bath. Drops Lucy just goes bang, drops her. Up uh, free kick from the same spot. Allow allow for the wind, Alexia. Same spot. Yeah. There was a few missed chances. I think you wrote you wrote down this. Montana one as well. Ham. Montana Ham post. Yeah. Like, yeah. Uh, just yeah. A, Everything about this game as a Swans fan, you're headbutting the wall. And then they hit the front. Yeah, yeah. And for, then they cost it, yeah. For they, five minutes, they played good footy. Uh, and they hit the front. Yeah. I forgot about it that. It was so stupid. And then just as was the case all day, and I hate calling out players, but we need to when players do the same thing over and over again, and, and it was bad. Matty Collier, I love you. You are a fantastically nice person, but you had a shocker. <laughs> yeah. I was like, where's he going with this? Yeah. Three times coming out of defense, you kicked it straight mm. to G- uh, not GWS, Gold Coast players. Not a 50 50 contest, straight to a Gold Coast player. Yeah. Coach killers. Yeah. Game killers. <laughs> but that's tough. It happened all day for the Swans. They lost this game more than Gold Coast won. Yeah. They have cost oh, themselves the game. Gold Coast put 50 game. points on the board, though, which they haven't done all season. But, I, yeah. think, I think that was that's still the a very Swans good The Swans were lazy in transition. Yeah. They were terrible coming out of defense. You were leaving it up to Sophia <laughs> very Hurley emotional, and Ella Heads. Say. It's just a game that they should have won, and I'm really annoyed. Yeah. Fair, no, fair enough. Ella Heads again made a great goal-saving tackle. God, I love her. She's amazing. Mm. God damn it, <laughs> And Bella Smith was a laid out. That didn't help. Brian is just letting, letting Yeah, you poor Bella Smith. I really like her. Um, <laughs> Playing really well. Yeah. Um, there's not much more to say really no. about I, that. All I Ali. was going to say is. Also, oh, why was Montana Ham only on the ball for the last 10 minutes of the game? Like got, finally got near the foot. It's like, yeah, yeah. Where's this been for the last 65 minutes? Yeah. yeah. We got, yeah, the Swans had six of the top eight ball winners as well, but just. Gold Coast, every time we went down there, they were getting us like they were just a bit more efficient, I think. They took so many good marks as well, Gold Coast down the line. Uh, Yeah, eight inside 50s from Claudia Whitford, but you also had Dupay taking good marks when they needed. They had, they took their marks when they needed Gold Coast. And at the end of the day, Mm -hmm. they had, when they needed an outlet kick or an outlet mark, they found it. Slightly more accurate kicking as well helped them get over the line. Yep. Fan bases are just, (laughs) fan bases are here. This is right here. This is Sydney. (laughs) So. Gold Coast, they're excited. They're off the bottom of the yeah. ladder. Get around them. I was potentially <laughs> meant to We're going to even talk about Gold Coast. It's the, got 50 points. I was about to say, no, as the fan base, the Swans fan base, I was potentially meant to host True Bloods tonight. Co-host, don't think it's happening. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> the uh, the umpiring was at its worst here as well. Yeah. So many horrendous decisions both ways. Not being paid and being paid. Like, I was like, there's too many free kicks being paid. This is disgusting. Then they miss an obvious free kick and some guys like... Well, how can you say that there's too many free kicks and then you complain when a free kick's not played? It's like, both things can be correct. Mm. Okay. Why can't we have both? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, we're going to lost those. <laughs> anyway, I'm just, go, Gold Coast, well done. You won a game. Yes. Actually, well, seriously, well done. Well done. Stats guy, please talk about Melbourne and Richmond. I need a moment. Yeah, you need a moment. All right, Melbourne, eight goals, three, 51. Richmond, five goals, eight, 38. The D's. Four to I Yeah. Brody. What is, what is yeah, going on? They're it was, back. It was pretty good. Well. Or sort of. Well, sort of back. I'll you, give you that, yeah. You know, we don't like to make those polarizing no, statements no. here, do we? <laughs> oh, we do. We do. Um, <laughs> but no, they're, they're, they're stringing it together, the D's, mm. aren't they? Yep. Um, I think Richmond had like a, a tough day at the office, but I also think that if there was an extra five minutes on that game. The last quarter. That yeah. was like Grizer, oh. three goals in three minutes yep. at the end there. Yeah. Um, yeah, I th- they were definitely they were definitely lacking some steam at the end there. Absolutely. Um, but what have I got here? Do we think Ellie McKenzie from Richmond a contender there for goal of the year? Possibly. Ran With pretty the, much the whole field. Ran the yeah. whole field. That was a pretty few cool. bounces and a kick from the pocket. Like, 
everyone go, oh, she ran the whole field, not much pressure. The fact that you finish it after running I'd like the tired. whole field, you'd be that tired just to yeah. even kick it. Yeah. Awesome goal. Yeah. Yeah. yeah good call. It was good really, call. really, really good. She was good. Um, I love that Richmond wore their pride jumper again yep. and solid solidarity with Kate Dempsey as well. Um, she yes. copped a lot of um heat during the week. Horrible. Um, so I really like how they how they got behind her. Uh, Zanka, I love Zanka from Melbourne so finding good. some form mm. again. Back in it, she had actually been quiet at the start of this season. Then she got that injury, was out for a couple of weeks, and now she's come back. She's getting a couple of goals. Um, I think that's in, why they're the sort of they're winning. There's some of their depth players, well, not even depth players because Zanka's a pretty good player, but yeah, just a lot of their players are stepping up and playing that consistent consistently. Whereas the teams that are like out of the eight or out of the nine where yeah. Melbourne are. Just aren't having enough players play consistent footy, yep. but they're finally, yeah, it's sort of clicking. Yeah. Alyssa Bannon, four, four goals, four snacks. She's Alex was so up and about good. About it. I'm yeah. sure you were up and about. You man. were very like excited just watching her play. Oh, and she's so fun, and she's a bean pole, and she's <laughs> yeah. she's got a 50, 60 meter kick on her. She's yeah, I know it's incredible. crazy. She's also got a sprint on her. Yeah, too. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like it is the complete footballer. It's just like if you could do this for twelve games a year. And at the moment, we're seeing it probably twice. Yeah. Well, great Holy run. moly, we've got a player on our This hands. is why they're winning. Two goals, one goal, one goal, four goals. Like, it's just so consistent up mm -hmm. forward, which is what they were missing at the start of the season mm -hmm. because she only had, before that, one goal in the first four rounds. So, yeah. really stepped up. She has really stepped mm -hmm. up. Yeah. Really good. Injuries? I know. This is a worry for the Tigers. Yeah. Oh. Um, Katie Brennan. Mm. Ankle? Yes. She was sort of walking on it a she bit after. Okay, so, yeah. maybe just a roll and they're just like, hey, any issues with you, KB? We're just going to see you out. Yeah. Especially, uh, they're not locked into finals just yet, are they? But I think they'll be nah, pretty safe. Nah, they're locked in. So You reckon? They might. Richmond. They, they might, yeah. They might even rest her. Richmond locked in. Just in case, because obviously mm. she's a superstar. Mm. The other one was Sarah Hosking. A knee. Yeah, knee injury. So we had they any... haven't said how bad that is yet either, I don't think. So mm. I can't hopefully that's not too bad because we've had way too many injuries. Way too yeah. many injuries yeah. at Richmond. But they that's a worry kidney. heading to finals. So hopefully they're both back because they're really, they're sort of their, their spark sort of players. Yeah, so. 100%. Mm. Mm. Fan bases, D's. We're back. <laughs> totally make this. <laughs> they, can they're lucky it. they kicked accurately yeah. as well, though. Yeah, I know. Yeah, and but, that's hard to do at Casey Fields. Oh, I know. The, the wind is cooked. Like when It's cramping. It's the worst place on earth. <laughs> so bad. I mean, Frankston was pretty bad as well. And it was it was so swirly and it'd be so strong. And then people would line up to, for goal and the wind would just drop. And oh, there'd be no wind at all. It's and so then they'd go, they'd kick it out wide and then just to, stay the, there. to the point <laughs> post and it would just stay out there. And I'm oh. like, oh, this is cooked. This, this is, is really cooked. It's cool. been the same at Henson all year too. And Henson, it's yeah. what happens when you play open air with no grandstands. Uh, okay. True. Uh, and Richmond are like, yeah, we got screwed. Yeah. They got screwed by the umpires, I'm going to say it. Oh. Mm. When, you lose by, when you lose by 13 points and the free kick count is as lopsided as it was, yeah, you got screwed. Just kick a few. I'm in more, the back. Kick a few more goals. Be more accurately though. Right, yeah, stats yeah, guy. Yeah. Don't, don't like blaming the officer. Derby, West Coast, 1-6-12, defeated by Fremantle, 5-5-35. Freo now 7-0 and going, yeah, Daisy, take this. <laughs> take it. <laughs> West Coast were really bad. Yeah, they were. They, well, they had they more inside good. 50s, five more shots on goal. Mm. They just didn't make the, most of their chances. Earlier in the season, they would have less inside 50s and then still get a chance to win. Like they beat Richmond with less inside 50s. I think that their other win, they had less inside 50s. They just cooked this from the start and just yeah. couldn't finish their dinner. They came into the season red hot, and now it's just the it's the downward downward. What did finish. you say before? One of their last five, they've won. yeah, they've won one and five. They've got a chance, and I don't reckon they'll win this weekend. But next weekend, they could win their final game. It's them. It's them against the Swans. Okay, so still a major improvement. Yeah. this season massively, though. but it's a bit disappointing. They've sort of dropped off a cliff. A bit. Yeah, Ella, Ella Roberts was taking really good contested mm. marks, yep. and then missed. Two goals that she definitely yes. should have co uh, completed. Yep. Uh, also, I thought Bella Lewis was really good for West Coast. She was sort of one of the only ones stringing anything yeah. together, and then she had no one, no one with her. So hi, hi no, okay. Yeah. Um, for the Dockers, I thought Min Strom was really oh, she impressive. Was every so week. She She's hit good, the yeah. league record of 48 hit outs. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Awesome. So she did really well. Give some love to the Rucks. They yeah, really right. We don't often do that. Yeah. Um, the Dockers were just better with the ball. They were more switched on across the whole game. Absolutely mm -hmm. deserved this win. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> McCarthy, Ashley McCarthy was really good. 20 disposals and a goal. Just oh, yeah, against her. Up. Oh, former team. team. That's so right. Yeah, yeah. She was traded from West Coast. Good. For Roxy I was find this. So she was traded from West Coast for Roxy Roo and pick 27. So she got the first goal of the game the first time she was playing <laughs> revenge. Team. Alex is all for revenge. And then she had a game like that with 20 disposals, one goal, and then Roxy Roo only got five touches. Okay. Oh, so, so she goes, cop that. She goes, you should have right. kept me. <laughs> 
who won the trade. It's Freo. Freo. Freo McCarthy's having trade. an awesome season. Like, yeah. like really good. So definitely Freo. Fan bases, Eagles like, uh, hate losing Freo. God, bloody Freo. They just need to finish their chances a bit no, better and yeah. they could have been in this game. It's more just anger losing to Freo. Like yeah. this is another game. Like, oh, well, we've, we've, yeah. we've had a good year. but I can't believe there's been seven derbies already. That, that seems yeah. like a lot. Yeah. And Freo fans are like, sick. Mm. Sick. Yeah, Freya fans would be really happy. Like up to six, or they still six. Yeah. Stayed in six. They're yeah. really happy. So, solidified their position. Yeah. They're really efficient inside 50 as well. Sunday, Taxpayer Park, Geelong, 7547, defeat Brisbane, 5737. Unheard of. What the hell? God. Geelong, where are they on the ladder? Like 13th or something? The goddamn Arthur and Martha Cats. <laughs> yes. Honestly. There we go. Seriously. It's, this is why we love this season, though. Yeah, this is the unpredictable. Most... They played so good. <laughs> yeah, this is they like l- how they played against Hawks, even though they yes. lost that game. They, at their best, they should be a top. They 18. drew with North Melbourne. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. They didn't kick a goal against goddamn Carlton. <laughs> what the hell? And they haven't even had like that many. I know they had uh, Amy McDonald was injured, but they haven't had <sighs> lots of injuries compared to other teams. So they, they got should... height. Oh, haven't they... got a ruckman. Ruck. They, ruck they just proved in this. Ruck. Ruck woman? Ruck, I just say ruck. ruck. I just ruck. say ruck. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> but oh, massive up. This is, is this the biggest upset of the year or one of? Yeah, uh, one, one of. of. I'm trying one to of. think of the other ones. The D's but... beating Adelaide yeah. last week. Yeah. Essendon beating Melbourne by 70 points. Oh yeah. Oh my god. Yeah. What is this? <laughs> what is this season? <laughs> There's been a lot. There's been a lot. West Coast beating Richmond. Oh yeah, true. Yeah. True. West Coast Richmond. I'm going that one. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that was a big one. Uh, I thought Bowen was really awesome. good. So she had like she obviously Double did goal. that that goal where she was like Facing going the, the wrong way, way and oh. then was just like, oh, I'm just going to go boot this. That was funny because I can't remember who was on the mark for Brisbane, but she. Was she on the mark the wrong way right. as well. So then Bowen's like, oh, I'm facing oh, the wrong way. And then kicks a snag from 40 yeah, out. Like, loved that, was, it. that was pretty cool. Absolutely yeah. loved it. But she also kicked another one. And she mm. she had a lot of, um, you know, hands in other people's scoring as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah. So she, I thought she had a really good game. Yep. Um, she hasn't been playing amazingly the last few games. A couple of, like, really Stepped sort of up. silly silly mistakes for an experienced player like her. Um, what else? I've Davidson. Got- Knocked herself out. Yeah. Knocked herself out. That was brutal. Just, and it just went like, because it was Meg Mack, the yeah. defender behind her. First and, of all, great clunk. Yeah, it was a great <laughs> clunk. And then Davidson's just like the whole body. I know, that was all. The, As I've said deck. all year, the AFL grounds are ridiculously hard. Mm. Like Marvel Stadium is genuinely concrete. Mm. And it's the same there. Like As soon as I saw like, Ooh, yeah, you're not playing next week. Yeah, that's even if the ground was softer, I think. Oh yeah, when you go at that fall, velocity yeah. as yeah. well, like yeah. yeah, it's all physics. It's not great. Cats just played fast paced footy already, yeah. and like they needed to do that against against these other teams. Where at the start of the season they were trying to play a bit tempo, a bit slow, but when they play a bit faster, they don't have the fastest team, but they're just moving the ball a bit quicker. Yeah. That's they've how they, they win games. They've got good, good skills. skills. They've got Bruce Barkers. I reckon it was her, one of her best games of the year. Ten clearances. Mm-hmm. I think Probably some, finally fully fit. Fi- mm. Fully fit as well. Uh, Ashton Maloney. Uh, I think she, yeah, Milani's awesome. Similar to Gilroy, both Irish, just both dominating up forward. Two goals, set up so many, uh, yeah, other goals as well. Yeah. Mm. Um, who else did I like? Oh, Orlo Dwyer. Oh yeah, two goals. Came back yeah. in after an injury yes. and kicks two goals. Yeah, yeah, that was just, great. just another person who can kick golf for Brisbane. It's fine, it's yeah. totally fine. They did give Geelong a little bit of a scare. Like they're like, are we are we, we going to do this? Are yeah, we and Geelong. Oh god, and. They solidified light, thankfully. Yeah. We and had uh, so, Taylor Smith as well. First time this season she's kicked zero goals. This is what I was so, just looking which is at. The, that's so why they lost maybe. Yeah. It's, she's got a total of 16 goals and now Ashley Maloney is on 15 goals, oh, like one her. behind her. Okay. Then it's Caitlin Gould on 13. So the pack sort of drops off there, but on 13 goals is, yeah, Caitlin Gould and um, Aileen Gilroy. So, so, all right, Brisbane. Irish are leading the way up there. Brisbane yeah. plays, oh, God, they play Sydney this week. Okay, so Brisbane's Taylor's that, Taylor's gonna kick, have kick to kick in two at least. Yeah. 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 And what, what's Geelong do? Oh, well, who knows? We well, yeah, Geelong could. Who Geelong knows? got Geelong got West Coast. Ooh. And then in the final round, uh, Geelong play. I can't find it. I've just lost it somehow. Geelong play Adelaide. Uh, that's oh, not great. Yeah. Okay. And but Bris- they could randomly and win Brisbane it. play St Kilda. I reckon Aileen Gilroy. This is going to be up there then. She's Ooh. gonna be the one to take it they, to because I think Hawthorne have got a good run good home. Form. So yeah. Hawthorne play Melbourne this Thursday night. And I was like, sick, I'm gonna go watch it. It's in Cairns. Uh, what? Oh, that's right, because Dreamtime. It's yeah, it's Dreamtime game. Yes. And then next week they play Richmond. So mm. Gilroy's gonna have to Gilroy could be on the ball. Yes. Oh. Fan bases. Geelong are just like I can't we do that every week. <laughs> 
Actually, not even every week. <laughs> oh, we just, we just yeah, say that. Just, just like, <laughs> just like really confused, but like excitedly happy at the same. Like a puppy who's who's outside for the first time, like doesn't know what to do. Mm -hmm. Just so happy. What yeah. a reference, yeah. And Brisbane are just like, <laughs> huh? Hate Geelong. Yeah. Got it. Yeah. Noted. They're still all right. They're still in fifth. No, sorry, yeah. fourth. They're still fourth. Yeah. Let's go to Windy Hill. Last yes. game there for the season. Essendon <laughs> one one seven. <laughs> Lost and it was a sellout crowd. The crowd was like it really was into it as well. Yeah. And the fact that Essendon only got yeah seven points to North fifty eight is just yeah, brutal for their cool. fans. Stats guys got as many notes here as I do for Swans games because I North know Mel I don't North, North Melbourne kicked eight ten fifty eight. Go on, stats guy. I this won't is read all of them. No, the notes, go on. But I'll go read a few of them. I'm self indulgent when it comes to the Swans. You can That's be because your team are we're, very good. Actually, I wouldn't say it's just when it comes to the Swans, mate. I'd say just generally. just self indulgent in general. <laughs> it's an only child thing. <laughs> are you an only child? Oh, oh, that explains a lot. Oh that my a lot. god! No, I knew that. I already of knew that. Of course, <laughs> of course. I picked you maybe with a sister. Okay. But it's just because <laughs> you love your girlfriend. So, okay, yeah. only child. Oh, my God. That does so it, make sense. And someone says when I say that and then tell people on the Leo, it all makes sense for astrology nerds. I don't know, I don't know I don't any of that stuff. I don't no, know I don't know. I'm so glad that like we're going to talk about that. Like a friend of mine who's like, she's an astrology nerd. She's like, this is indulgent, just so you know. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Go. Stop, anyway, let's talk did, about North Melbourne. Did you Melbourne. see Gerald just like <laughs> yeah, lost when, his when Gerald laughs. Yeah. It's you know it's good. Gerald giggles the out of me. Okay. <laughs> That's because you keep swearing. Oh, not again. Another edit. <laughs> oh, my God. I don't even realise that I do. Okay. <laughs> anyway, we're going North Melbourne. Sheerlaw everywhere early on. Just taking clunks. Left, right and centre. First two so goals good. of the game. So many score involvements. That tall duo with Randall. And then you put Emma King down there. Mm -hmm. Tallest team. I, I need to actually probably look into that in terms of actual overall height. Yeah. But North just looked like the tallest team. Yeah. And that is sort of their extra level. The, uh, the reason that uh, we score a lot of goals as well, we're lowering the ice. So they got Taylor Gatt, uh, Bala Eddie, uh, Garner, just every time we we're going into our 50, no bombs. There was yeah. no bombs in the whole first half. Yeah. That's why they got up to 40 something points in the first half. And then on the bombers side, I know we don't like, uh, yeah, talking teams down too much. The tactics were just all wrong. Yeah. All wrong. A couple Not of for the first time yeah. this year. Maddie Gay yeah. was doing everything 30 disposals. Yeah. She's like, can someone just come someone with me help here? Me. 80% uh, efficiency with those third disposals yeah. as well. They'd get it down there or she'd kick long, which is fine, just trying to get it out of defense. And all of their players were pushed up, especially the first half. Mm. And all the fans there are groaning with the umpires. The umpires were pretty average. The umpires, and then they'd get it down forward. No one there. The dogs literally did that a couple of weeks ago and they got four points. Bombers did the exact same thing. That tactic for any AFLW team, I think, has to go out the window. You can yeah. play a little bit defensive. But to have no one in their forward 50 and they got it down there a few times, mm -hmm. I don't, yeah, I don't think they should be doing that at all. Yeah, it was a pretty it was a pretty tough game to watch. Like, obviously, Maddie Gay, like, mm. awesome let's season. just talk about that. Awesome season. How I think far this in is front probably... of the best and fairest? I reckon she's beating Prisparkus. Oh, yeah, I think so. I would say yes, because just. only because people would be sick of voting for Maddie. But I, but I also think it, no, I mean, true. <laughs> I mean, oh, best, yeah. again. No, but best and fairest at the club, you just like, because there's different parameters and stuff that they may take into yeah. consideration. So that's why I reckon she'd be winning. Yeah. yeah. Um, absolutely incredible. But yeah, as you said, she needs more help. And I would say that the rest of the Bombers need more help also. Um, it's just, it's the same thing we've seen week in and week out is that sloppy footy. Mm. And it's just not being able like to. handballs, little short kicks. Yeah. Which, it's yeah. those tiny little like for good, one for good percent players of, sometimes. Hey, as well, if yeah. someone's on a lead, mm. kick it to them out here, yeah. not up here where the defender yeah. is going to take. And they showed they can do that against Melbourne because every kick was sort of oh, hitting the target. Also, just, yeah. transition again. Oh, yeah, yeah, well, because they don't have the skills yeah. to transition properly. They don't have. You can't trust that that person when you kick it to them, is going to take it and you're not going to have to run to them yep. and not in front of them to get the, you know, like mm. there's just, there's a lot I think going on in every single player's head when they're near the ball or have the ball or are trying to get the ball. It's, there's just too much going on because nah, there's no, there's no trust in that, in your teammates. Yeah. Skills, so. North, yeah. The other thing I was going to say about North is uh, more disposals, way more disposals, but also way more tackles. Which is which That's is been which is all year. been their thing all year. Number one offense, number one defense. Just so balanced both sides. This year now, North have an average winning margin of forty eight points, oh, which is geez, unbelievable. You'd hope to choke in the finals. I know that's what usually so happens. So they got Adelaide next week. Yes, and then they've which is a big got, game in Adelaide. Yes. Yeah, and then they've got oh, at Norwood actually. Yeah. <laughs> that game should be at Adelaide. Adelaide and then North anyway. have four of the top two. We were reading out the top goal scorers before you go. Oh, there's no North player, but they've got four of the top twenty goal scorers this year. Yeah. Just, 
I think it's like four, all four of them are over 10 goals, which yeah. is awesome. Fan bases. Oh, pumped. Absolutely pumped. Probably should have won a lot by a lot more. Missed some easy chances, uh, but just absolutely pumped. Yeah. I'm getting a bit cocky now. <laughs> yeah, Essendon. There they cheered go. when they got their first point. That's a bit. And yeah, Bonnie did. Positive. Bonnie's goal was very good. Read the read the wind. Read the wind yeah. beautifully. She really read Actually, the Actually, I didn't wind. even talk about Kate Chilo, the first goal of the game. Yeah. Oh my God. Looked like huh. way out of bounds. Same spot. Yeah. It was the same Beautiful spot. Beautiful kick. It made a full right hand turn. Awesome. Yeah. And for that fact, that was her first kick of the whole game and she yeah. knew how to do that. Awesome. Good Ford craft. Yep. Bet one of the best set shots in the comp, Kate Chilo. Anyway, moving on. Stats guys got this score in there wrong. Uh, oh. Adelaide. Uh, played yep. Collingwood at Victoria Park last night. I think that was last week's right score. That might have been last week's. Yes. 8-8-56 eight, 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 defeated uh, Collingwood 2-1-13. Yep. Do we want to start with the burst water pipe? What the that hell? Was, why is there like a water Vic pipe Park's there? Vic Park's had issues for 12 months though. So that they move VFL games during the season there yeah. as well from there yeah. to somewhere else. I'm so glad so no one got injured. ongoing issue there. But they literally just threw a bunch of sand on it. And <laughs> yeah. it's like, oh yeah, this. But it looked like I you mean, could step. I mean, sand is Good for it was grass. A good option, like yeah. it's a thing. Yeah, like, but throwing it where sand. the water pipe is and it's just like a sand pit. I think it what? worked okay. But yeah, it looked yeah. like someone Do could get injured. Do you have another option of what they should have done? Well, given it <laughs> happened, Greens keeper Alex. Given it happened two on. hours before the game, you couldn't really do anything. But if it happened right. the day before, it's like we're going to Icon Park. Yeah. Well, yeah, you can't do it. Yeah, now, two hours before, before the game. it just it just that's just ah. It doesn't make a sense. Yeah. But no one gonna. I was nervous someone was gonna roll was, their ankle in it because it was pretty soft. I was soft waiting for someone to get tackled on it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's gonna hurt. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, Crows were just like eh. a bit flat earlier. Yeah. Like for the first half, it's just like ah, oh, this this game sucks. Mm -hmm. Collingwood brought the pressure. For they did. First quarter and a yeah. half, I'd say. Yeah. They have tended to do that this mm. season yeah. because. That is that's their genetic makeup, Collingwood, yeah. and it's like go it's about it. go hard, yep. um, and have that ferocity and that intensity. But then they've got nothing left. Mm. Yeah, and then they got to the second half, and the Crows like, okay, they found their rhythm. They got inside Ford fifty more. Yeah, they had twelve inside fifties to two in the third quarter. But the delivery mm. into the Ford fifty was just perfect football. Chef's kiss. It was oh, <laughs> it was amazing. Like. Marinoff is just lowering the eyes, hitting Caitlin Gould on the lead, hitting Ponter on the lead. Saw the greatest kick in AFLW history when Eb Marinoff just on a 45 degree angle from one wing to the other, bang, laced out. I think it was a good one. Didn't break stride, inside 50. Yeah. Mm. Amazing. It was, I just watched it. was it really went, good. Yeah. Oh my God, that's amazing. Yeah, it was and, so good. And Steph was like, what happened? I'm like, ah, footy. It's footy <laughs> stuff. So I heard a really good stat about Marinoff, and okay. it was from Shiloh Curtis during the commentary. Yes. Love Shiloh. Um, really good. She's, she knows everything. Knows her stuff. About <laughs> everything. She knows about the drainage at Icon <laughs> yeah. Park. There she knows go. about the drainage at Vic Park. So I feel like similar Alex, just a, a very wide, wide random range, range of things. of knowledge because yes. she cares, and we love Love that about Charlotte. See? So, Ed Marinoff in the last 12 days has had 106 disposals. Oh, that's awesome. It's not Get enough. Out of Can town. You, should you raise the ball? Get or something out like of that? town, Ev Marinoff. That is ridiculous. That's crazy. So, she, she, no one is going to beat her for the W award. Nah. She, it's in the bag. Yeah. So, Marinoff had 36 disposals. Uh, you know, eight clearances, again, a bunch of tackles, seven tackles, but 645 metres gained. You had three goals kicked by Taylor Levy and Caitlin Gould. Caitlin Gould. Caitlin Gould. Sneaky good Gould. season. Yeah, she we is probably actually. Probably haven't talked about early it. Early on, Hatch out in the first half was dominant early, getting her hands yeah. on the footy lot, and then Marinoff's like, okay, okay, you're not getting my three votes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's my turn. So like, hey, what the hell, man? Like, this yeah. is, yeah, great. We are seeing one of the great individual seasons in football, not AFLW, not AFL, in football. I agree. Yeah. I know Patrick Cripps just comes off 45 votes. He played in a bad team last year. Yeah. A, a team that snuck into the finals. We are talking about the best player in one of the best teams yep. that, has that has lost, what, one, two games? Mm. And she's probably potentially on 27 from 27 votes. Mm -hmm. Every chance. Yeah. Yep. This is one of the great seasons, and just give her the medal now because I would like to collect my money. Yeah. Oh yeah, I forgot you had a medal. <laughs> forgot you. I called her at the start of the season. I should have yeah. a medal. Please don't get suspended. Um. So there was a massive clash between Eliza James oh. and Chelsea Randall in yes. that first oh, quarter. It was. Oh. Like huge. they both went to the bench. Um. Chelsea Randall passed the concussion test, but Eliza James was ruled out of the game it with was concussion. Head on head. It was that just was brutal. Can yeah. I make one um? Observation there. Are you, is this is the adult in the room? Well, this is the <laughs> this up. is the adult. Um, their teammates came up to them and just pulled them yeah. up straight away. I was like, <laughs> they just they got hit in the head. They literally just got hit in the head. You don't know what's happening with the neck. You've literally not assessed the situation at all. Their footy players not jump up yeah, it's just, and it's up. And I'm I know, like, I know. let that be 
lay on the floor. <laughs> Gerald just lost again. Oh, not again. <laughs> it's a, it's um, a rule for every game we're going to have one. It is like, it's like a let, fourth. let them lay on the ground and just let the do doctors a self, do their work. Like a yeah. self assessment. Yes. Am I getting up from this? Do I know who I am? <laughs> What's what going on? Yeah. Nah, come on, mate. This <laughs> yeah, game, just we've got up. a footy game to play. <laughs> Absolutely not. No, good call. Good call. Band bases. Collingwood are like, sure. Season from hell like for just this. Season from hell. Benici kicked a late goal to make sure they avoided their lowest score all year. Benici was pretty happy with the goal. So there's the celebration when you eight goals down. Yeah, don't be doing that. And, cr- <laughs> and Crows are just like just like slowly, slowly ticking, ticking, ticking. Problem is, Adelaide, you play North on Friday night. It'll be a really mm, good game. That's going to be a mm. good one. At Norwood, which is a really Man, fun ground. Should we drive to Adelaide? Yeah, but I'm leaving Road trip? after this. Sweet. Let's do it. <laughs> nah. Only seven hours. Oh, separate cars. Separate cars. No, you, like, <laughs> I'm, no you're, you're on the back on a bike and I'm just giving you the <laughs> pull. Bike. Yeah. Uh, tipping results. We haven't done the stats. But I've we, actually got them if uh, you want. I was going to say, I thought we stunk it up. We all got five somehow. Oh, because what? Oh, wait, no. Bryony got six, I think. So there right. we go. We got five because I tipped the Eagles. I tipped the Swans. We both tipped the Suns. Yeah. And then uh, Bryony also tipped the Dockers. So, yeah. well done. Job. Won this week. <laughs> Best team of the round, full credit. Geelong? Yeah. Quite sure? Yeah. That was out of nowhere. I've, you beat Brisbane. I've put Geelong in, but obviously that's an obvious one. So I'm going to do a special mention to the Hawks. Yep. Because GWS came out firing and, and they had to really like pull shut into their down. depth mm-hmm. to be able to yep. shut them down. And that's a quality team. Yeah. Cool. I put in Gold Coast. I, I do agree that Geelong are the best you. team. I just put in, yeah, because you go for Sydney. No. I just think, <laughs> as I said, every week it's a gag on me because the Swans are bad this year. That's all right. Uh, no, I just put in Gold Coast, scoring 50 points, getting their yep. first win on the board. Just some to celebrate. Also, if you haven't checked it out, check out our interview with Tanya Kennedy. So much fun. Yeah. Don't watch it on a fast speed if you're or a fast speed s- podcast listener. <laughs> yeah, it's our Irish uh, accent yeah. and fast speed. Or check out our socials, our TikTok, where she breaks down what she eats for breakfast on game day. It's wild. It is wild. Wild. Yeah. Oh, yeah. What is it? Oh, yeah. Tell you after. Okay. <laughs> yeah, check out the socials. Yeah. yeah, check it out. Oh, you got to yeah. watch it. Give yeah. us the interaction. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Can you, yeah, give us yeah. a like. Seriously. <laughs> 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 Bronny, can you watch the podcast? Like, do Absolutely. You watch the show? <laughs> Absolutely. Every episode. <laughs> Best on ground of the week. Bannon. Bannon. Four goals. Four goals. Yeah. Beating Richmond. It's Bannon. Uh, I see you, Bannon. And I raise you, Annalise Parker. <laughs> yeah, she was really good. Yeah. Because she I also was couldn't give it to Marin off again. And best on ground, best off ground also. Nice. That's a double. Yeah, okay. Double. Mm. I like that. Good call. I'm, go- I'm going uh, Aileen Gilroy. Just, I, oh, yeah. I've said this all season. My favorite player to watch. Three goals, 17 disposals, 15 kicks. We love that from a four. Just get along. Get Cheers. a goal. Yeah. Six tackles and four. She got four clearances as well as a forward. Just... Awesome. So, favorite player non North? Yeah, Gilroy. Gilroy, Gilroy favorite player sure. non Essendon. Oh, there's too many. <laughs> there's, there really is too many. Yeah. I like Emma Carney. Yeah, nice. Yeah. Nice. Good choice. My I, Marinoff feels obvious. So yeah, no, you can go Marinoff. Yeah. Oh, go someone else. You got to go. You got to go. Got to go off, off the beaten path. Can I say Ella Roberts because she plays for West Coast? And yeah, we no, don't talk about West is... Coast enough. Yeah, Robbo. Yeah. Yeah. I like Robbo. that. I like that. Or Derek. Derek's oh, yeah, very okay. consistent. Yeah. Yeah. Two goals on the weekend. Anyway. That's us done for AFLW today. That was a big well, show. Today. That was a longer. <laughs> yeah. My brain hurts. Yeah. <laughs> <sighs> That's most days, actually. Uh, anyway, we'll be back Thursday to preview a massive, massive week of footy. Like, honestly, have a look at the schedule this week. Very we exciting. have dream time this weekend. Yes. I'm so very much looking forward to that. Thursday night is awesome. Friday night is great. Then we're into dream time and Sunday night, no, you know, we don't need to see this ones get demolished again. By you never know. I it's saw a it a month season. ago. It doesn't need to happen again. We've had uh, upsets every week. You never know. Is Sydney the one to do an upset? Is- I don't think so, Tim. <laughs> Dear Jesus, footballing gods, Gary Ablett Jr., please. Yeah. Gary Franklin. <laughs> no, not senior. That guy sucks. <laughs> yeah, okay. Uh, fair anyway, enough. thanks to Bryony for jumping on as always. Shout out to Stats Guy as Thank always. You. He's up and about North Melbourne. Yes. Good. Thanks to the team behind the screen. As usual, make sure to smash a like on our social media channels, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and X AFLW Today. And of course, on YouTube, it's just AFL Today. All the videos coming out there. I think one more show for the men's program this year where we, the boys will talk about the draft because all of a sudden Carlton fans care about the draft because they won the trade period. Anyway, subscribe to Cricket Today, Football Today, NBA Australia, NFL Australia, and hold all tickets. We have every sport you need except for rugby league because it sucks. It's carbon. <laughs> anyway, that's it. We'll catch you later on this week for more AFLW Today. Until then, look after yourself and remember... Booty's back! Yes. Excellent! <laughs>